So let's talk about the user hive where I said most of the good stuff is. Um, this is personalized settings for the user that's logged in. And so uh, if you have accounts that are compromised, like you believe that the attacker has stolen someone's credentials and they're logging in as them, then you'd want to attack fire into user.dat and user class.dat. Um, all right. And you might find some machine accounts too that contain useful evidence. So the user specific keys you see here, and they're all quite similar. They all keep a list of things the user has been doing. Shell bags, user assist, multi-user, multi-language, uh, I think, MUI somehow, and uh, most recently used typed URLs and type paths. Um, shell bags remember the position of windows. If you reopen a window, it remembers how big it was and where it was and what view settings you had, and they're all stuck here. They're called shell bags. So that records what windows were open. Um, so it's got the full directory path, the time of access, um, and the time when the access occurred, and that's quite useful, of course. You can now track the attacker opened this window, they opened this sub window, they launched this program, you know, it's, it's nice. But there, you need a special tool to extract it, and here's one of the tools that can do it, SBAG, decodes it, and gives you a nice list of the folder names and the creation date, and so on. Oh, that's the marching band, I think. The high school marching, the, the high school marching band practices in the cold over there. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, out there waving flags and stuff in the dark. It's rather surprising. Anyway, um, so, uh, all right, and then user assist, this tracks applications you've launched uh, and populates the start menu. And through the Windows Explorer shell means anything you've clicked on, like start programs or you click, double click the shortcut on the desktop. Uh, so user assist only tracks things open via Explorer, not from the command prompt. And it does, however, it's tied to the user because it's in the uh, user.dat file. Um, uh, user, user, nt user dot dat file, and so shell bag prefetch um, doesn't identify which user launched it because it happens before you log in. So it's a similar information, but not tied to the user. Another thing about um, user assist, which is mind-boggling, is that Microsoft obscures the data with ROT13, which is ridiculous. So this PUEBZR is what you'll find in user assist because that's Chrome, with each letter moved 13 in the alphabet. So it is amazing and insane that anybody thinks of this as a usable encryption technique, but that is what Microsoft uses. Um, they continue to use it even though it makes no sense at all. So that's Microsoft's privacy protection. Anyway, this is the multilingual user interface. Um, that's a globe. We've all wondered this from the beginning. Why is Windows like this? Yes, Microsoft has been like this from the beginning. Um, I know I know why Commodore was like this because it was actually written by unpaid high school students. That's why a lot of their operating system was ridiculous like this. I don't know if it's the same thing with Windows, but there's a lot of stuff in Windows that is just laughably terrible. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, you tried to Google why the heck is the registry like that and nothing. Yes, there's a lot of things you can ask. Uh, yes. I'm sure there's some historical reason it ended up this way, but the end result is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, so this is the multilingual user interface. It's another list of the programs executed by a uh, user, and I guess it must have something to do with determining what language you want to use. Um, and then there's the most recently used key. You know, every program will have a file, almost every program will have open your recent files in here. So each program has its own list of recently opened files. There's no standard registry path or anything, but every program, most Microsoft Office and pretty much HXD and every program has this, and that's another trail. It will have stored some information about those and you might be able to find it. There's a thing called MRU Blaster to clear the most recently used list on machines as sort of a privacy tool, so that's an option, but of course it can only do the ones that this tool knows about. Anyway, then you got open and save, most recently used. These are ones that were used in the open and save dialog menu, and you can find them in the registry, these MRU keys. And uh, the start menu, things run from the run box. You know, if you open the Windows run box, it will remember the last several things you've launched there too, so that's in here. 
a list of recently launched items, and recently opened documents with any file extension used to open the file, populate the file menu. Here's a bunch of them for things like Windows Explorer. Um, and then there's typed URLs and typed paths. If you open Internet Explorer and try to type in the URL, there will be a drop-down list of recently opened URLs there, and you'll find them here. That only applies to things that have been typed, and only applies to things that are typed into Internet Explorer. And when I tried it recently for Edge, it did not seem to pick up ones typed into Edge. So I think this is of extremely limited use because a lot of people use other browsers like Chrome and Firefox. But anyway, if they're actually using Internet Explorer, you'll find stuff here. And some people like it because it means they actually typed in the URL. They didn't just click on a link. So it shows intention in forensic cases where you're trying to prosecute people. Yeah, here it is. You type in a URL, and it shows you your recently loaded URLs down here. That's what the... Uh, MRU list is. Typed URLs and type paths is the ones of these that you actually typed in. And that proves that you had an intention to go here. You actually typed in that, that path. So it might have legal consequences if you're trying to prosecute somebody for child porn or something. Then there's remote desktop. If you use the Microsoft remote desktop protocol, which is very useful and, um, to remote control another machine, this will maintain a record of the machines you connected to and who they logged in as. So that's terminal server is Microsoft's technical term for their remote desktop protocol system. All right, and so there's a lot of tools to analyze the registry. Um, there's Reg Ripper will just extract a lot of information from a registry <coughs> image. A mic, window, mic, there's a Windows registry decoder. Auto runs gives you the automatically launching ones. And of course, the one we're using mostly in this class, Velociraptor, has a ton of tools that harvest information from the registry, and it's very easy. That's why Velociraptor makes this all very convenient. It will automatically find the keys and such. So there's also a lot of single purpose utilities to do little jobs like shell bags and shim cache and so on and user assist. Um, if you use Velociraptor, it's got some version of all those things built into it. So it's pretty nice when it works. But as we're going to see, sometimes it doesn't work. Anyway, let's do the last Kahoot, which is somewhere up here. There we go. 12B3. Thank you what you were saying last time. I remember I offended my liberal friends when I complained about Obama's summary execution. They really didn't want to hear that. They wanted Obama to be a good guy and Republicans to be the bad guy. And it's not that simple. <laughs> A lot of people thought he was just wonderful. He was okay. He was like an average Democrat. I mean, I never thought anything else. My sister was a huge campaigning for him and everything. She thought he was just wonderful and then was really let down when he turned out to have some flaws. I never thought he was that great. He wasn't, he wasn't bad. He was about an average president. But he was not this fantastic miracle worker people thought he was going to be. And the stuff about summary execution, that really bothered me. And towards the end, he even said, I really don't want to pass this power on to the next president but Trump did not use it. So Trump's actual appetite for personally committing murder is not as high as people expected. In that respect, he lacks something other autocrats have. He really wants to talk other people into doing violence, but he doesn't have much appetite to have his hands, his fingerprints on it. And that's probably why he failed. He didn't get good relations with the military. Anyway, we'll see. It looks like he has not set the standard for future Republicans though. That would be nice. Anyway. Yeah. One can hope. All right. So which one will tell you programs that have been used, but not who launched them? Okay, that's prefetch. User assist will 
Um, I think it will tell you. I'm not sure. All right. I think it will tell you who did it. All right. Which one launch lists programs launched from the start menu, but not the command menu? Okay, that's user assist, and that means it'll have to tell you who launched it because it must have already had the user logged in. So it's probably in the user uh, the user folder. Anyway. All right, which one proves that you intentionally visited a website and didn't just click a link? Yes, yeah, of course, typed URLs. All right. I wrote it short. There was a bad question in there I removed. All right. Prefetch, yeah, okay. <laughs> This week.